Welcome! This is what is happening on the sun today, the 14th of August 2011. For only the second time this year, the sun seems to have no sunspots. And without sunspots, there are very few flares. Speaking of flares, our trivia question today is so far this year, how many M flares have we had and how many X flares have we had? I think the number is going to surprise you. The answer will be given at the end. From the NOAA GOES X-ray plot, we can see that we've had no C flares in the last 48 hours. However, in the last 24 hours, the X-ray background has risen to the B2 level, which is a promising sign. Well, on a day when there are no sunspots on the sun, there is not very much to discuss when you look at the sunspot image. Region 1270 died overnight, and there are no new regions appearing on the disk or coming over the east limb. The only thing to note in the sunspot and magnetic movies is the decay of those regions. Particularly in the magnetic movie, you can see how diffuse and uh, spread out these regions are. There's no strong concentration of magnetic field on the sun at all, so that's why you're not seeing any sunspots. But if that's the case, where is the increase in the X-ray background coming from? Well, for that we have to turn to the AIA instrument on the SDO. First, let's take a look at the prominences and filaments and see if any of them are being coming activated. There are three regions I'd like you to concentrate on. Right on the west limb there's been some eruptive activity. On the northeast limb you can see some um, activity as well, again from behind the limb, probably this region coming over in the next day or so. And in the southeast you can see a quiescent prominence that looks as though it's about ready to lift off. But none of these will likely contribute to the x-ray signal, so there's something else got to be going on. And for that we have to look at the coronal images. There are three regions here that are of interest. First the regions just going off the northwest limb which seem to be the brightest thing on the sun, but they don't seem to have changed very much. I think the new element are the two things on the east limb, one in the north and one in the south. The high temperature x-ray image, again from the GOES SXI instrument, shows that the coronal hole has grown quite significantly, uh, particularly to the north, over the last 24 hours. Thank you for all your very creative suggestions for what it looks like. Uh, my wife seemed to think it now looks like a draft running across the surface of the sun, but it has now come to me what this shape reminded me of. It's those old grainy pictures of the Loch Ness Monster, Nessie, swimming across the surface of the lake. What do you think? OK, back to science. The Soho coronagraph data show that we've had a continuing series of coronal mass ejections, both identified and unidentified, with features on the Sun. Unfortunately, HelioViewer is still down, so I can't identify these individual eruptions and show them to you in detail. The solar wind has shown some interesting changes. Although the temperature and the density have remained relatively constant, the solar wind velocity has started to increase. Now this may be the first harbingers of the effects of this coronal hole. The first indications of that would be what's called a co-rotating interaction region, where do they get these names from, which is the interaction or the turbulence between a slow wind stream and a fast wind stream. The high energy electron flux took a nosedive in the last 24 hours, and we can see in the proton monitor that we're back to background levels. The NOAA 15 satellite images of the auroral zone show that the, it's relatively quiet there, and that the KP index has only been varying between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B2 level. The sunspot number is claimed to be 35, but I cannot find any sunspots on the sun whatsoever. The radio sun intensity is at 83 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has risen to 390 kilometers per second, with a density of about 3 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is there is a remote chance of C flares, but a very, very unlikely possibility of getting M or X flares. The sunspot number will remain low. The chance of getting coronal mass ejections is good. The solar wind speed will edge higher, and the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is quite remote. For the longer term forecast, we can see that there are two regions due to come over the east limb in the next day or two. There's an even brighter one following along behind it, but those are five or six days away and who knows what will happen there. Let's see how active those two regions behind the east limb are by going to the Stereo B data. That's a spacecraft that is located 90 degrees behind the Earth, so is seeing the corona as we will see it in about a week's time. And the two regions which are just to the left of Sun Center in these images are both showing some signs of activity, but the southern one continues to be the most active. 
Similarly, we can go and check on what Region 1263 is doing now is behind the West Limb, and that too seems to be very active at the moment. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the Sun, check out some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the Sun Today or some of my other videos, go to my channel and they're all listed there. The answer to the trivia question is that we've had 51 M flares and 3 X flares so far this year. While that is below what you'd expect by this time of the cycle, that's still quite a bit of activity. Speaking of flares, in the background here I have a video of the so-called Bastille Day event. This is an extreme case of a major proton event. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.